Blackface has a long and painful and racist history in this country. So we want to give you a heads up that some of the images we're about to show you are very disturbing. Blackface became popular in the mid-1800s in minstrel shows when white performers darkened their faces to depict African Americans in prejudicial and offensive ways. The well-known blackface minstrel character, Jump Jim Crow, was the namesake for Jim Crow laws, the measures that enforced segregation in the South. Even black actors were forced to wear blackface in part to make white audiences feel superior. Civil rights organizations have pointed out for decades that blackface dehumanizes black people and reinforces very harmful racial stereotypes. Dewanda Lynn Reese is curator of music and performing arts at the National Museum of African American History and Culture in Washington and joins us at the table to discuss. We had such a spirited conversation in the makeup room this morning, so I'm so glad you're here. Thank you. Why don't you start us off by letting people know why this is so offensive? Because I have so many white friends that say, I don't understand it. I meant no harm. I admire Diana Ross. I admire, as the Attorney General said, Curtis Blow. And I was really trying to pay a compliment. Well, it's really, it, part of it is really understanding the history of blackface and the inception, which started in the mid-1800s. And what it was, it was white performers blacking up their face and caricaturing African Americans, looking at them as lazy, um, unintelligent, um, stereotyping in the certain stereotypes like the mammy figure, Uncle Tom, the trickster. And so all these caricatures were taking elements of African-American people and making them objects for ridicule and humor and entertainment. Mm -hmm. Cut to where we are today, they're not trying to play the mammy role or the Jim Crow role. No, they're not. It's, it's a different, it's the lingering images of, of blackface and minstrelsy that really kind of set the course for popular entertainment, which has gone throughout the 20th and the 21st century. Do people's intentions matter, Dwindlin, here? Um, not necessarily, because I understand how people would think it is a form of flattery, it's a form of just imitating somebody you admire, but it's, it's knowing the history that really makes a difference and how painful these images were for African Americans and what it set off in this country of a way of, of stereotyping and dehumanizing people based on the color of their skin. Which was an effort to enforce powerlessness, which is if you dehumanize and make them lesser, then you can do any old thing you want with the right. laws. It is a question of power. And when people ask the opposite, um, someone had mentioned White Chicks, the movie, when the Wayans brothers dress up mm -hmm. as white women. And it is different. How um, so? Why so? Well, I think it's that power dynamic okay. you talk about with appropriating people's images. And it, 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 when you have the power to do that and to oppress, it's very different than a cultural exchange, a fair cultural I mean, exchange. Jim Crow, the original blackface character, became to epitomize the Jim Crow laws, state and local laws that enforced segregation, enforced bigotry, enforced Plessy v. Ferguson, all of that. That's the history of this country. To Gail's question, what about those who are saying, and this was the conversation mm -hmm. that Gail brought up this morning, those who are saying that during it in an inspiring way, an aspiring way to dress up as Beyonce or mm -hmm. a cultural figure of prominence? It's still painful. It's still painful African Americans, and I think there are also a lot of white Americans who feel the same way. Those images are tied to a legacy of oppression and slavery and objectifying and devaluing people. So if you look at the cultural mores of the time, the images really have a lasting impact and don't mean what people intend necessarily. As with so many things uh, in this day and age, it's hard not to have children of young age become aware of news and the headlines. As I was preparing for this last Last night, my six-year-old was next to me, and he asked what this was all about. What's the teachable moment here? How do we talk to generations of children to come about why this is so important? I think part of it is knowing the history and explaining the history to your children in a way that breaks down the stereotype to see where it came from. Is there I room for atonement here, yeah, Dwondalyn, where some people, because some people may be losing their jobs, is there room for atonement? I think so. I, I don't think this is a way to label people for a lifetime. People change, they become educated, they evolve. And is it possible that someone who dressed up in this way 30 years ago, is that person racist? That's not for me to say, but I think the act of, of going through this means that there's a lack of understanding about the meaning of this. Does that equate to racism? You'd have to talk to that individual personally, but it is an act that 
um, perpetuates racist ideology in that way. Mm. It's so hard to talk about race, but we have got to have this conversation. Yeah, so. Gwendolyn, thank very you guys to talk about today. it with. Thank, thank you, you for having me. And we should note, out, note that there is more on the website of the museum, too, if you would like to know more, as well as visit the museum. Right. Because it, there's a lot about the history that we can all learn from. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you.